Welcome back to another episode of Let's Face the Facts. I'm your host. My name is David Almeida. I'm an actor in Orlando, Florida, and every week I sit down with an actor or artist friend, and we watch an episode of the classic sitcom, The Facts of Life. Then I hit record, we talk about the show, and lots and lots of other stuff. This week, I have two very special guests. That's right, not one, but two. Double your pleasure, double your fun. I have Matthew Arder and Paul Padilla together. This momentous occasion is brought to you by the fact that, before we move on to season four, we have to do The Facts of Life Goes to Paris, which was a TV movie, and, uh, wow, as far as TV movies go, this one is a Lulu. So, it is my first time ever attempting to record three voices simultaneously, and it turned out to be more challenging than I planned. So throughout, you might hear a little light, soft echo periodically throughout. I apologize in advance for it, but it was really, really hard to get it to all line up and sound like anything. So uh, I'm very, very glad it came out okay. So one little correction before we get started. Um, you'll notice we constantly are talking about them departing from LaGuardia Airport. And uh, my friend Todd Michael, who is a flight attendant, I played him a little excerpt from the show, and he pointed out that they couldn't be leaving from LaGuardia because international flights do not and have never departed from LaGuardia. It is, in fact, JFK. So I now know that we've all learned something here, and uh, we're aware that that's wrong now. And lastly, as we talk about the director's cut versus the reruns and the edited down versions, if you're following along on the videos that I post from dailymotion.com, they are the edited down episodes. So just if you're wondering about the footage you're not seeing and the stuff that we talk about that's missing and new to us, sadly, unless you have the DVDs, you don't have access to it. And for that, I am uh, disappointed because I really wish that the show was streaming in full-length format somewhere, and I still have hopes that that may happen someday soon, maybe hopefully before I finish this podcast. Anyway, it's time for us to get moving on here, kids. This is part one of two, of course, because it's a long show. It's, the, it's more than triple the length of the episodes we do, so prepare yourselves for the cliffhanger, and uh, let's get ready, because we're about to watch season four. I call it episode zero, part one, and the original air date was September 25th, 1982. So, let's jump on in. Let's face the facts with Matthew Arder and Paul Padilla. Ladies and gentlemen, I am witnessing a momentous occasion, and you are all now here and witness to it. Praise. Because I am sitting at my dining room table in my beautiful home in my gorgeous grand room. <laughs> With two gorgeous grand dames of the theater, Matthew Arder and Paul Padilla are here together at the same time! Why was I second? Thank you for getting the billing right. <laughs> Thank you for getting the billing right. Yes. Okay. But I good. was second. Okay. And it wasn't anyway. even an and Paul yeah, Padilla no, as it, Paul Padilla. Yeah, it was just, it was just yeah. yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah, no. I'll take it. It's all right. I'll take it. Yeah. I'm good. You, you'd have been in a box at the bottom of the marquee. Uh, okay. Okay. I'll <laughs> it was it. alphabetical. And... It was alphabetical. I'll take it. Okay. Yeah. No, and as long as you fine. know that alphabetically, I still come before everything else. Well, I am a huge a fan and, and admirer of Matthew Arder, so I am happy to Aren't be you, though? second billing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And you two gentlemen had never met No. Before. I mean, we've, we've met. We've met. Yeah, I've said hi and given him a hug here I and was there. face down <laughs> in a pillow. <laughs> and, but, and so we met. It was like 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> technically we met no technically we met <laughs> yes. but I mean pause? it's nice to see your face yes. I gotta be honest oh, you know yeah. you know 
I can't promise the same for you. Right. Like, to see, maybe this is why. This is why the ad said face down, Paul. Yes, yes. This is why. Now you see it. So that's why I'm taking second billing. Because, yeah. See my face. Oh, and you're like, that's okay. why it said face down. That's why you wanted the blindfold. Yeah, I still owe you a dinner. But anyway. The, this, is, this is my first attempt at a three way. Three way. Which is why I bought Perfect Menage timing. a Trois. I bought Menage a Trois Pinot Noir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul is drinking Menage a Trois Pinot Noir. Yes. Matthew was drinking a double gulp of Diet Pepsi. <laughs> Diet Coke. How dare you, Diet Pepsi? Diet Coke. What kind of white what trash this, do you Sacramel? think I am? What is this, Sacramel? Subway? This? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I am drinking pure, <laughs> simple, untouched water. Oh, look good for you. It is a Russian water, though. It's called it's vodka. Vodka. <laughs> it is. No, it's just one. Anyhow, but literally, this is my first time doing a three-way recording <laughs> and um you're gonna giggle every time you say it you <laughs> and i so the microphone i'm using is a little more antiquated than the other two so if the vocal quality if there are any inconsistencies in vocal quality well that's the price one has to pay but to make something like of, this happen speaking of price you had mentioned that he looks like yeah your microphone is like bob barker's Oh, it's it's yeah. long and skinny. Yeah. Who I slept with one time. <laughs> Did you you slept with Bob Barker? It was so awkward. Well, that because yeah. he kept trying to see if I was spayed or neutered. First of all, <laughs> um, and he kept laughing the whole time we were doing it. And I was like, "What's so funny, Bob Barker?" And he said, "Well, we're doing it doggy style, and my name's Barker." <laughs> <laughs> And be dead before we're done. I never did find that plinko chip we used as a diaphragm. Uh, <laughs> I didn't. I don't know. Sorry, it'll, but I, yeah, yeah, it'll yeah. It'll come yeah. out yeah. at some point. I the plinkos. Uh, so, um, well, we have just watched the cinematic masterpiece that Orson Welles wished that he had directed, yeah. and his name was somehow affiliated with. It will go down in history as the greatest, um, I, I can't even. Let us say it all together, ladies. The movie we just watched was The, the Facts, Facts of, of Life Goes to Paris. 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 Yeah. Can't I couldn't, I was at work today and I could not wait to get here to do this with you, both of you guys. Oh, what a terrible mm-hmm. letdown. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> watched is a strong word yeah. to describe what well, we did to that movie. We, yeah. We couldn't not talk during it so we already were mystery science theater 3000 yeah. the podcast it, is done it just wasn't recorded yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. with funniest material you didn't hear it and you're not gonna sorry about it yeah, <laughs> but the uh yeah we just watched it and uh here's the funny thing i matthew was like how long is this how long are you gonna... <laughs> <laughs> and i was like okay in the reruns it's broken up into four pieces yeah so oh, it's yes. four episodes, and it's each of them are twenty-two minutes. So it's eighty-eight minutes. It's not even an hour and a half. But I always Ugh. felt disappointed when it came on as a child. When I would watch it, I'm like, no, now I, have, <laughs> I can't believe that I have to watch this for the next two days because yeah. it would like be like two episodes a day. Yeah, it's kind and of I was like, like son well, of like a bitch. The Brady Bunch when they show the episode where the other whole- family. Is, oh right! Yeah, yeah, they're not that backdoor. Yeah, yeah, like right back. It's like, oh, uh, oh come on! on. I'm just yeah. gonna forget it. Really or the empty and... nest episode of Golden Girls. Exactly. Oh, yeah. At the time, I'm like, is there a hard copy uh, on right now or something that I can yeah. watch instead of this? Could, yeah, I, it sucks. Yeah, could I turn on Cops or some yeah, shit some, that's exactly. better than this? Um, but then I pulled out the DVD and realized they had edited the footage down, yeah. and we actually watched the full length director's cut. Director's at, cut at 96 <laughs> minutes long. Oh. So that means there were eight additional minutes yes. that you do not see when you no. watch it in the reruns. And I was Lucky like, oh bastards. my God, this is amazing. This is like, I've never seen this before. Yeah. So, so we're not going to talk about how you dropped bacon on the floor before. Sir. No, but no. The quote unquote craft David services. Made an amazing wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let us let us dinner. discuss. I we talked last time about my amazing French toast bake that you said, well, I'll never see it. Oh, it's really good. I made, I made a French toast bake and a quiche yes. because they're French foods. We're seeing and, a French movie. And I brought croissant. And it's right, Paul. And he bought and French. And a lot of wine, which I'm the only one drinking it, but that's okay. Yeah. And, and he will uh, he fruits. will still drink it all. Fruit. I'll do it. Yeah. I mean, I'll take one for the team. Audience, there are fruit. two deep fried pieces of Wonder Bread 
with cinnamon slip yeah. splashed on them. A pie crust with like a scrambled egg in it. <laughs> and Paul stopped at Target and got fucking croissant. Croissant. And red wine, but which you're not yeah. going to drink. I'm just, I'll yeah. Market just, Pantry, which is as good as any French baker. Well, I was hoping to find like some kind of like French pastry mm. something from Target, but they, apparently they're not Publix. And Publix, yeah. you can maybe find it. I didn't have time, you know. But, yeah. No. So, so what I'm hearing is Matthew, anyway. you are still unsatisfied. I'm just, I just Matthew's starving. It's just me. Apparently. Matthew's starving. Apparently, yeah, I'm wasting he, away. <laughs> <laughs> so normally, I am dissecting a 25 minute episode, and that takes several hours. Yes, yes. that is because one of us at this table. <laughs> I feel I'm efficient. I feel I'm efficient. I hear some other people. Your, and, your shows do come. And you guys, like, just yeah. But well, I, you I know feel why? I'm, I'm like an hour. You, you don't talk a lot. You let me get the job done. <laughs> I kind of do. You shut up and you let him read the script word I kind of word. enjoy it, but I do. I'm like, that's okay. Do it. You know? I'm like, is it a comma? No, it was a semicolon. No, it was a comma. Yeah. No, it was a semicolon. He's yeah. court okay. reporting okay. The, the episodes over here. Yeah. But uh, we're, we're going to try to see if we can get through this in two episodes. We're going to do this in two parts. Oh, we are? So at the moment, we Ooh, only this are... This is second two-parter. Yeah, this is going to be a two-parter. So a three-way two-part. Yeah. Facts of Life goes to Paris, y'all. Here, Here we, we go. go. <laughs> um, we're, let's start then. Let's do it. Here now, we go. Now, wait a minute, though. Uh, the two of you, I always ask my guests to synopsize hey. the episode. Paul fears it and lives I, in I mortal fear. I don't want to do it. I didn't write it down. So Shit. since, Paul, we know that you are a master of improvisation. No, I hate it. Um, I want you two to give me a, a quick synopsis mm. of this movie, but speaking in alternative words. Okay. Alternative words. Matthew, what? <laughs> like the... That means we throw it back. No, like, I know. My favorite so... part of okay. the... It's like that. <laughs> do I have to do one word? I'm sorry. This, you realize, this is a disaster. Realize I'd have to teach you basic improv, Paul. Oh, no, sorry. you do. <laughs> Absolutely, you do. He admits it. Yeah. Okay, so go ahead. Do it. Let's see if we can do this. The, okay, uh, I'm utilizing my talent. Here. The... I'm giving it to you. Facts... Of life, girls go to Paris. Yeah, <laughs> woo! High fives, high fives. That is Can art. I breathe now. <laughs> that Jesus. is art. Was that so hard? <laughs> yes. We don't know how many I times I've flushed. asked them that. Oh my god! <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. So yeah. our movie begins at LaGuardia, and uh, Paul and I were both surprised to see this because. The whole part of the my movie, childhood, my childhood, the, <laughs> your childhood, Laguardia, yeah, yes. Yeah. But the movie has this little precursor before the credits of them at Laguardia, and it's all, wow, we're going to Paris, and oh, Mrs. Garrett, I'm gonna study at a French cooking school, and Blair, I'm gonna fall in love. But Matthew said, is that Laguardia? And I was like, no, they're in Paris. But no, it really was Laguardia. I never you seen and it. I, you and I thought they were shooting Laguardia as Paris. Yes, yeah. yeah. Because we had not seen this, because it is missing from the... Because in 1982, there's no stock footage of, of a Paris of Charles Air... de Gaulle Airport. <laughs> it's true. It costs money. That, that shit, yeah. Do you, are you That's, the budgetarian yeah. of this? They, they, have, they have horizontal striped shirts to pay for, for Joe. <laughs> so but, many extras. But we get uh, Exposition City here. This is all... Mrs. Garrett's like, oh, well, I'm going to cooking school. Well, aren't we going to see you? No, I'm going to be in another fucking movie. Mm-hmm. We're and only going to be here for 48 days. Yeah, it's <laughs> like everything expositionally laid out. And the funny thing is when you watch the TV broadcast version, you don't miss it. Everything that no. they say happens is you, reinforced. You know they're in Paris. They're in Paris, and they in the the the, the new version. The yeah, it's like they they're there. They land. It's like facts the facts of life goes to Paris. Paris and bam, they're there in Paris. Here they yeah, fucking yeah, are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like okay. I'm fine with that. Yeah. But yeah. So and what I just stated was pretty much it. They're going there. We we don't talk about why the girls decide to take a month from their summer vacation to go study in Paris. We don't explain in the least bit why Joe, who has to like dig in the cushions of the couch in the parlor to pull together her tuition money, is able to afford this trip to go to Paris. Because we need to see this movie. And I'm curious, was it like a Sunday night movie? Was it a Thursday? Back in the 70s, like what did we, like why would we like sit and watch the Facts of Life girls go because, you know, I don't remember. Because we was... were gay and we had no friends. Well, yeah. that's... <laughs> but well, I had friends. I was just... Didn't... I was just really gay. Did you? Were they... 
like real friends or like how I had friends. Like, uh, but they were friends, but I, they I was friends with Joan Collins. But they didn't quite were understand you? my love of the Fox Boys. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Um, okay I grew up in Texas. Remember that. <laughs> fair. So, okay, let's see how good she is. Uh, hey, Google, what day of the week was September 25th, 1982? The 25th of September, 1982, fell on a Saturday. Oh, Saturday night. Uh-huh. That would have been my Saturday night. That oh, wow. would, that's amazing. So, gee, we would have been off partying. Uh, yes. We would have been out drinking and drugging I, with our yes. friends on a Saturday. 88. Like, <laughs> I would have been in Studio 54. <laughs> the rails of coke. Why can't we watch this? <laughs> Oh, we are yeah. never going to get through this. So once this again, NBC, who was this show for? Yeah, it's Saturday. Well, they hadn't gotten the Golden Girls yet. So it was, no. a, oh, it was on a Saturday. It's a whole other podcast. And, oh, and remember, w- w- before one of the, of the many comments as we were making, Matthew, you were like, why would they make a TV movie of a TV show that was like... It was not even in the top 30. It was not even in well, the top 30. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was like 24. No, because I looked it up today because I was going to do my Wikipedia search and find out like what it was up against. You, you know what I mean? That, but... <laughs> and find out like what it was up against, but I couldn't figure out. It wasn't Dallas. It wasn't Who Shot JR. No, it wasn't I, but Dukes now we, we would be able to tell. No, I, feel like, I feel like it was in the top 30, just not like the top but 20. But it wasn't highlighted. It had to be. Wikipedia it highlights it. it. Don't put that black thing near my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I have never said those words before never. in my life. Never. Yeah. Not once. Anyhow. Um, but, Get but that ir- Egyptian come on. thing away from my mouth. Irregardless. <laughs> um, like Matthew said, why would they make a movie of this when NBC was still seriously struggling to rebuild? And right, wouldn't you do different strokes? Wouldn't you? Wouldn't different strokes go? He's a millionaire. Gary Coleman. I mean, and Gary Coleman could have done like so Lost is, in Paris. This is what eighty three. You said right? eighty two. Eighty two. September eighty two. Really? Yeah. Okay. It broadcast yeah. in September, and this was the week before the premiere of season four. Okay. For NBC, this was still one of their top-rated shows, and I think it might have surpassed Different Strokes. I don't feel like it was, honey. I'm sorry. God damn it. Pause it. Okay. Pause no, this. we're going to pause it. We're just going to talk. We're going to edit it I don't out. really feel like it was either, but... The yeah. Facts of Life, mm-hmm. according to the Nielsens, for the season 81 to 82, the one we just completed... Yes. It was tied at number 24 with Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Little House on the don't Prairie. Don't you okay. the ever question me again. <laughs> no, I, I don't. I apologize. I loved it. I friends. watched it all the time. But Little House on the Prairie was also the shit. I would like you to... Now look. they should have gone to Paris. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> Little House. <laughs> What's that shit? What a crossover episode. <laughs> <laughs> Just have fucking Laura Ingalls walking by Blair about, by the sand. About, be like, what the about, fuck did that? How about like, covered wagon? Just. <laughs> what a great yellow you have on. Walking by with her bucket lunch. <laughs> I love the bucket lunch, though. Uh, I've always wanted one of those. Uh, like, no. do you do with you? <laughs> yeah. No. Different strokes did not even make the top 30. Okay. So, and... <laughs> You okay? <laughs> they should have gone to Paris. <laughs> <laughs> we are all like mopping and sweating and Can crying. Can you imagine that production <laughs> meeting, though, where they were like, we got this money. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. show are we going to take? Yeah. To- I say we're, Paris. Yeah. We're, say we're not going to spend it on costumes, yeah. obviously. But which, no. but which show are we going to take, guys? <laughs> when, <laughs> like, Nellie goes to school yeah. no. in Paris. And yeah, we get oh Mrs. Olsen happened. over in she, Paris. Yeah. Yeah. loses her keys and everybody else. You know, goes yeah. Well, I mean, Caroline was oh. the cook in the restaurant and stuff, so she would have been at the, at the cooking school with Mrs. Garrett. Two weeks on a boat. (laughs) (laughs) This is before the Statue of Liberty, so that montage is gone. It would have been so all of them went to Paris. They would go in their time period. It would have all of them been leaving New York at the same time, and then the Facts of Life movie, and then as they leave, is that a boat way, way out there? I truly had no, I I had no recollection of all of the montages in the Facts of Life Goes to Paris until you told me, like, here's yeah. another montage. Yep. There's so many. It's yeah, like, and we there. get it, and you're they, in and Paris. They they we do get it, them. you're in Paris, we get it. Like, But it's many, yeah, many, but, many montages. I mean, I'm glad that yeah. we all are pretty much of the same mind there. Anyway, okay. um, so we have... So they're leaving LaGuardia. Yeah. <laughs> We're 25 are 23 minutes, minutes into this, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. So they're leaving LaGuardia. We have the most important thing that we have got to discuss. Mrs. Garrett's ponytail. What I is... I said it was fake. Matthew said it was no. real. No, you said it I, was real. Matthew I said, said it, was it was fake. fake. So we you have two and one. But, but once again, we questioned you and we were wrong. Yeah. That's <laughs> because... <Yeah. laughs> Thank you. But yeah, when she is later having uh, her relaxing time with her feet in the, mm-hmm. in the hot water... Mm-hmm. Charlotte Ray's hair is completely down and uh, cas- cascading like, over her breasticles. But, but you know, like, it kind of makes sense because if someone, if they were like on hiatus and had to do this quick thing, she probably let her hair grow. She probably didn't worry about it. She you was think probably... she got six inches of hair <laughs> over a summer? I don't know. No, look at me. Do I really know how much she hair did grows? It. She yeah. did. It did look like extensions, but then I got like burnt out. So no, I was like, never mind, David. Wrote, threw it over her head and started brushing that shit. She did. You ain't going to do that. She did. You can't do that. That was, that was not on. On the syndication version. No, it was not. Uh, that so was she was like trying to tell people, this is my fucking hair. Yeah. I, I think, as I've said before, all of the complex and hideous bun configurations are a product of how do we take a 55-year-old woman who has got this big, thick, long hair that is completely inappropriate for any character that she would play. But you just said, you know, 55-year-old woman, but I want to ask you both, like... Honestly, doesn't Mrs. Garrett always seem old? But she wasn't, but she always seemed But again, old. Blair looks like she was 40 through this whole thing. People, she was... You don't remember, darling. <laughs> yeah. Back in this time, every like you look, pick up a high school yearbook from 1982 from any school. Everyone looks 40. Show. Everyone looks 40. It's true. And they have the hair, it's so true. the craziness. They've all got like <laughs> yeah. your, your mom's yeah. glasses yeah. that dinner met plates. down here and went yeah. over. And now, um, a couple of little sitcom tropes. Sitcom tropes, yeah. Yeah. Um, we re we reestablished Blair's joke about her luggage. Luggage always got and comedy I, and evergreen. I was thinking like again because I love shows like that where they're showing like they're actually in LaGuardia, so there are people around. Yeah, like nobody had roller luggage. When was roller luggage oh. invented? Uh, like late eighties. Because nobody had it. Well, like, it's the most important thing ever because I can't imagine. <laughs> can, but can you imagine having to carry your fucking luggage no. around like It's that? like upside down ketchup bottles. Yeah. Why did it take I, us so long to figure that shit and out? And why isn't cereal in a Ziploc bag? Uh, um, agreed. Or oh chips. Why aren't chips in a Ziploc bag? Ziploc bag. Exactly. But uh, my other favorite one is we have heard no flight announcements the entire thing until oh, no. LaGuardia to Paris. Well, boarding. Yeah. And now everybody's looking oh, up with their eyes. Yeah. Yep. Reading with their, listening with their eyes. Yes, indeed. We hear nothing else. Yeah. But keep in mind, this was back when you walked by Barney Fife and security. Yeah. And yeah. they were like, and you got anything in that bag? No. Go and, on and, in. And, and not to bring the room down, and you can cut Too this late. out if you want, but they were on TWA, which I remember kind of bummed me out. As a kid, it scared the shit out of me. Why? Because because the TWA had... Uh, Remind me. I, I uh, this They is... had a big hostage crisis. His memory like, is fuzzy. No, but the, hey, they, hey. Were, they were held hostage on the plane, and there was like people outside was a of the windows. I, that does sound familiar. Outside the windows with like masks and... Oh. They, Oh, it was huge. Yeah, yeah. It, I, yeah. No, it does sound familiar. I just can't remember yeah, the details. I just, um, I was terrified of TWA Airlines because of all these pictures on the news of hijackers with masks oh. and guns and, yeah. And it was the first three letters of the word twat, which is also a well, that is <laughs> also a thing. Sorry. Do it. The flight over. Oh, the flight over. As soon as they take off from LaGuardia, this score happens oh da, 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 da. were you kind of hoping though that it was going to be like how family guy does like slow a slow version of the facts of life yeah. no like, it i was, was kind of hoping it was going to be like this orchestral version of the facts of life no 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 this score the score i think is score made me think that love was possible well, because it's, it's the first three notes of Once Upon a Dream. Well, yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Yep. No, you're right. Some and it, and it is a heavily scored movie. It's they huge. really scored. I they, mean, no, they, like, they scored the fuck out no, of it. No, they did. Because they were like, can I get a baguette? They're like, Oh, no. The motorcycle has broken down again. 
and this is dr directed by Asad Kalata, who directed probably, I think, the most of all the episodes of the TV show. Mm -hmm. So to his credit, trying to take the approach of, oh, this is a single camera movie movie. This ain't no film theater three camera. So Mrs. Garrett <laughs> leaves the girls and uh, off, goes, off she goes with the quote-unquote driver who was supposed to meet her. Then the girls are like, well, we're supposed to meet this woman from the school. And in comes this dour, old, bitchy, like, they, the casting agent said, we need someone that looks like Eileen Brennan, but more severe. Mm -hmm. And uh, bravo, they found mm -hmm. her. And I miss Eileen Brennan, though. She's so good. Yeah. Oh, I think well, she was awesome. busy on a hit show called Private Benjamin. Yes, yes. indeed we do. I remember that. I remember that. Show. Oh, yes. She but, won an Emmy for but, that. But, CBS. So then, this woman shows up and she is like, are you the ones from the Eastland School? Well, I'm here to take you. And it's clear um, this ain't going to be no fun. But why is she... They're in Paris. What accent was she? She was like a German yeah. like, housefrau type. Yeah. Like, it was not like a... a it was not... Hello, how are you? It yeah. was not the French. It no. was, but still very American sounding as well. Yeah. But I don't know what the fuck she was trying... Like they just had to yeah. make it clear physically and visibly... She did not, because so far we haven't met anybody with a British or a French accent yet. And we yeah. don't for a while. They're coming. They're coming. But yeah. On the bus as they're going there, uh, Blair does comment when the others are like, the Eiffel Tower. Oh, my God. Blair's like, oh, I've seen it so many times, but it never gets old. It's like, well, then why didn't you just fucking pay for them to take a trip there? Why are we doing this school exchange thing where yeah. we she... learn... They are yeah. about to be taken an hour outside of Paris to what is essentially a prison where yeah. they have to study. And the other thing is, Mrs. Garrett, you are not the cook at the school. You are not aspiring to be a cook at Le Cordon Bleu. She's Why are you taking a cooking chefly course when you are just picking whether they're going to have carrot sticks or zucchini? She's the dietitian. She's the counselor. She's the suicide counselor. She's Don't defend things. her, Paul. You always take her side. I do. I love her. But no, but no, you're right. It's like, it's just add one more to the pile. And she could fly a plane. <laughs> and, and flying planes yeah, yeah. and being a beautician. Remember, yeah. she was going to make Tootie oh, a beautician. Shit. Yes. And uh, yeah. Anyhow. Skin care specialist. Skin care, exactly. She still has to run that suicide hotline that they started up after Cynthia <gasps> took her life. It's true. It's, you know, it's a tough life for Edna Garrett. Oh, make time is what she said. Mrs. Garrett arrives at her hotel. And that's after they have driven crazily through Paris. A lot of, uh, through the uh, windshield angles of a car speeding through traffic in Paris, and you get the audio of, oh, 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 oh you're going so fast. Oh. Which I, I appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> but it was clear that the film had been sped up. Oh, God, oh, yes. Course. And yeah. what I love is that she's from New York. Hello. She's been in Manhattan. It's true. My sister threw up in a, in a cab in oh, New York once. Oh, it's scary AF. Yeah, yeah. I, I live there and she threw up. She yep. was like, she just so couldn't breach. It. Yeah. it would have been a little more believable if, yeah. she, if, the, yeah. if this yeah. had happened to the Little House on the Prairie people. Yeah, <laughs> they would have, yeah, they would have been, your horse is running so quickly. <laughs> Mrs. Garrett says to the driver, this mad, crazy, insane driver, that she is going to let the owner of this hotel know that that he's a terrible driver and he's like well guess what i'm the owner of the hotel this place called the petite hotel he is pierre petite and so she's like well i guess i can't complain and uh that's the end of that but he does play a significant role in the development yes. of this plot so then mrs garrett goes to chef antoine's restaurant where chef she antoine. will be studying with the great chef antoine and he turns out to be a total fucking dickbag, dick. asshole, He's piece of shit. He's a dick. Okay. However, from the montage, all he knows about her is he's shown her how to stir. Yeah. He shows he's had to show her how to um, use that blender thing. Yeah. And she's had to learn how to the, the toss mix. a salad. Yeah. So but he's probably like, who the what is this bitch? But when you watched, <laughs> her, when you watched her toss the salad, you were not happy. You said yeah, you thought that's you were... how she tosses the salad. No, I said she doesn't know how to toss she a salad. She doesn't know how. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Matthew. All weak. <laughs> uh, so you made some comments about 
Uh, how shall I say? Your intense dislike of the French people in general. How dare you, sir? You kind of did. <laughs> did. Did Paul, will no, you back you, me up on this? I will back you up. I again. had a very long relationship with the wonderful Marcel Marceau. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> did but you? Luckily, just, he didn't yeah. tell anybody about it. <laughs> I dated a couple of French people, but you really had some. You really had some. Uh, you were opinion. saying that they're you, just weirdos. <laughs> yeah, you you frequently would throughout the go. What? Is, that's a French thing. What is that? Uh, you were like hell. Yeah, mm-hmm. you did. Yeah. But you hated that Chef Antoine was a jerk, and the fact that on top of it, he was French, and so he was talking to her like this. You were like, fuck well, this and guy. That had to do with the writing, because like when he was like. <laughs> Very bien. Re- bon. Very bien. Very bon. Yeah, really? very bon. Really? Really? Like, come on. I just, and like, oh, uh, it just, you know, yeah. like people from California, they're just weirdos. Yeah. It's the land true. of fruits and nuts. Do you want to wish my it's... book? <laughs> <laughs> Paul, you have to tell your story of dating oh, yeah. a French boy. You shared your story. Oh, my God. Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no, no please no i dated a french boy i can't believe i'm doing this but anyway i, I dated a the boy. short version the short, the short version. version dated a french boy um and he was here for like a short amount of time like a year and we dated and um i took him to dinner and everything was horrible like he hated everything like there was too much ice in the cup, the the, the ceiling fan was but going too fast. But yeah, uh, and he said, um, "This is bullshit. <laughs> it's bullshit. Uh, the fan is too is too cold, and there's too much ice in the, in the cup, and it's bullshit. Everything is bullshit." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, so everything's bullshit. Basically, I'm buying you dinner, and everything is bullshit." But then you know he was at home, and I wanted to go in the shower because I had a long day, and I said, "I'm just going to take a shower." And you stay out here, and you watch TV, and here's the remote control. And uh, he said, do you not want me to go with you in the shower? And I was like, no, because, like, showers, like, it, it's... Somebody's like, left out in the cold. You got you to gotta do what you got to do. Unless you got Joan Crawford's I, shower, no. I, I don't want Oh, my... Right? Isn't that amazing? Because only one of us is going to get the, the shower wind, head. Yeah. The shit yeah. heading yeah. down. Just, like, no. If wait. you can't have that, I just yeah. need to get shampoo my Shampoo faster, down. buddy. Shampoo exactly. faster. And... Um, um, yeah, so we, so he said, do you not want to go? And I said, no. And he asked me, he goes, do you not want to wash my butt? <laughs> and I said, I don't even want to wash my own butt, but I have to do it. <laughs> uh, and so I'm going to do it, and then I'll come back, and yeah. Yeah, but when I did come <laughs> but, back. But, but, I come see what back, you did there. Yeah, but when I did come back, and I said, you can watch anything you want, he did pick, what he was watching was, Ratatouille, the Disney oh. French movie. Uh, whatever. I believe you mean Disney Pixar. Well, whatever. Yeah. I don't care. I was like, really? That's <laughs> what you picked? It was so, like, I couldn't believe it. Never yeah. understood shower sex. Mm. Never understood shower sex. <laughs> it's like, cause I, I don't like yeah. it. Well, and I can't yeah. have you. I hate it. I if, hate it. If water were more viscous, yes. Or if you no. had Joan Crawford's. Like yeah, five yes. on you. If yeah. I had Joe Crawford's thing. But also, yes. I wear contacts, and without yes. them, I am legally blind. Yeah. So I'm just gonna see a big thank blob, you. and I'm like, I thank don't you. know where the soap is. Like, <laughs> thank I'm you. Fucking... I thank you. I hate yeah. shower sex. You've been... I appreciate it. I'm glad to be in a room with people that also hate shower sex. Yeah. It's like Matthew, you've been sucking on the faucet <laughs> for ten minutes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my dick's over here. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So Facts speaking of life of showers. goes to Paris. Facts of life goes <laughs> so speak, to Paris. So speaking of shower sex, let's get back to our 15-year-old <laughs> teenagers. The Why were the, all the men chefs already had hats on and she's sitting there with that ponytail flinging around in a kitchen? Well, she said, <laughs> I know, find yeah. a big old long red hair coming Hairnet. out of your souffle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You mad. She was waiting. But, for... the, but the thing is that when she was, uh, she, she's compla- when she's complaining to Pierre back home at the hotel, she says, they won't let me wear one of those hats. And he says, well, they're all actual chefs and you are not. Ah, uh, Okay. Miss that part. Yeah. Miss that vital piece. That vital piece, yeah. That must have <laughs> been edited no, out wow. of the broadcast I didn't, version. I didn't hear that either, but okay. <clears throat> but, okay. So then um, uh, the, we have the girls. <laughs> uh, their, their studies, we see them studying, and they get back to their room, which is tiny, by the way, with four little twin beds. They, they are dreaming of the vast open plains of mm-hmm. their bedroom up over the cafeteria. But... The woman comes in, Miss uh, 
what, what's her name? Miss Crazy lady. Southwick. South, Miss Southwick comes in and says, I have an announcement. It's in like a very American voice. Yeah. And, and they're like, well, we're all standing here and you can see us all. <laughs> And she says, uh, you are going to complete the rest of your live and learn tour of France in Paris. Tomorrow morning, we are going to go into the city, and there is where we are going to stay for the rest of your time, because they have like five days or four days left of this. Mm. And the girls are like, oh, that's awesome. We were just complaining that we're not getting to see the city that we came here to see. Right. So she leaves, and in the room, they quickly devise a plot started by Joe that they are going to break away and and make a break for it and head out and enjoy Paris on their own away from this bitch and the confines of this school. The interesting thing is that as they're hatching the plot, the girls are all still performing as though they're over at Embassy Studios okay. in Burbank. And good. I'm glad you're talking about this. And so that they are literally thing. like she is two feet outside the door. To the, and they're like, what? You're going to leave? Yeah. You're going to sneak away yeah. and escape from the school? Yeah, and it'll be easy. Exactly. The transition from going to a studio audience type of show, type of taping, type of being, you know, yeah. to being on film. And there's yeah. these really weird, strange pauses that, that, that happen. And, uh, and we're thinking, what's happening? Yeah. What's and happening? They're holding for the laughs. Nothing's happening. That aren't there. And it, that's, it, <laughs> it, it could be 30 minutes shorter, the show, because you're like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's. I wrote down, like, I, I actually wrote down about that because this is around the time in my notes where I wrote down, the writing is so delightfully, terribly in, innocent. Uh -huh. this. Like, it's, there's no, like, we're so used to a much quicker pace now. Mm -hmm. And a different style of writing where yeah. like that much ex we're expected now to be smarter i guess like this much exhibition wasn't needed and, yeah you know like and they have to they have to do it they have to you know they have to do these lines like they are, who was writing this being like this is fucking yeah emmy worthy yeah right here <laughs> no, it wasn't. you know what i mean like yeah no but they do at one point somebody says where are we going to sleep and it's like ah we'll figure it out you know it's like nah. Anyway, but Matthew was like, "Where the fuck did they sleep last night?" And they slept apparently under a tree. That's what you said. Yeah, they well, Joe does. Yeah. yeah, that's where we figured there's a line about. We that. haven't met that guy yet. Yeah, stop jumping ahead, Paul Padilla. <laughs> Sorry, I'll just shut up. <laughs> Y'all have a good time. Oh wow. Um, so. Mrs. Garrett is still in school and still failing miserably. Wow, we're going to be here all night, all aren't we? All night. Uh, all night. Get comfy. Okay, she's Settling. still in school. She's so. still in school. And <laughs> what happens is the chef is talking about his boeuf bourguignon. Mm -hmm. And so she turns and says, and of course he's talking about the wines that one can use in Buff Bourguignon. Bourguignon. Uh -huh. And Mrs. Garrett comes back with, well, I can't serve my girl's wine. And he says, you are a bitch and you have to fucking quit. Yeah. Here's a broom. Clean up. You don't deserve to cook. You're a woman. Or I will expel. This is why women shouldn't be in the kitchen or I'm going to fucking expel you. And, and it's not an ironic statement. Women shouldn't be in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, of all places. Of all places. That's kind of where women belong. I mean, am I right? We yeah. all know that's where they... Anybody? Yeah, totally. Guys? <laughs> but the thing is, I can't serve wine to my girls. Yes, when you cook with wine, the alcohol bakes out of it. The alcohol... Yeah. Anything cooked with wine... Paul, uh oh, Paul looks like he's gonna I, cry I, I, right I, now. I have nothing. Paul just, he just had four uh, pounds of boeuf bourguignons, wondering oh why he's not God. buzzed yet. It sucks. Okay. No, keep talking. <laughs> so the deal is the whole precept, the whole concept that, uh, oh, I couldn't make a dish that has wine in it and serve it to my girl. So you don't serve it to the fucking girls. You're in school and you're learning to make boeuf bourguignon, you make it. Right. What the fuck? Right. Make I agree. The beef bourguignon. But. The, the what now? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree with yeah. but, whatever statement yeah. just happened. But that's what uh, causes this to go like to the next level, the DEFCON 5, where he threatens to expel her. So she's like, well, shit. Mm -hmm. And then Mrs. Garrett, after a very long, tired day, 
is relaxing in the hotel. Pierre is pouring hot water on her mm. sore feet. Ugh. And just as she, with her hair down, uh, decides she's going to get some rest and okay. fall asleep in the chair, who comes in? Tootie, Natalie, Blair. Of course. And, and I have to say, her reaction was perfect. It yeah. really was perfect because... It, I know when you're like, just want to have time alone on a vacation without anything. And then people come into your life and you're like, great. She had the great, perfect reaction. Yeah. yeah. But Matthew's response was a little different. What's that? Your response was, I'd be all, fuck no. Get, get out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, he would be like, get out. Because they, well, we didn't really mention it, but they established at the beginning that Mrs. Garrett was very clear with the girls that we are going to Paris, but we are yeah. not going to Paris. Yeah. And, 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 the, and that was yeah. never on what I saw, yeah. you know, which was amazing that, that's, yeah, she was like, I want to fucking so have my own to, time. I haven't seen that. And, and they still showed why. up and messed up her time. She you know, Garrett. She doesn't care. And, and this is the point, by the way, if you're watching it in the four installment <laughs> rerun version, Apparently. this is the end of part one. This, oh. is, a, this is also going to be a four and installment version. only took us an hour. <laughs> it did. 54 minutes. We got to pee. <laughs> Um, okay, well, let's see if we can breeze on through part two. Yeah, all right. Um, oh, oh, oh. Actually, before we start part two, we do need to point out that when the girls separate off from the tour, Joe, of course, is like, well, I'm off to Le Mans. You have fun. You know I'm on a different path. So bye. And she walks off. And Matthew, what did you say? Well, after letting them know that <clears throat> Le Mans is um, 133 miles away. She's like, peace out, and starts walking. <laughs> but then she says that she's going to get all of their luggage off of the, the bus. Yeah, she gets she their gets luggage. It. She gets it. <laughs> that could have been another great JoJo. How did you get our luggage? I got I your got luggage. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. That would have been great. I got beer. I got beer. I got, I got beer. beer. Yeah. How did you open the lock? Matthew, I got it open. Got spirit animal, whatever. But yeah, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. So... Uh, yeah, but Matthew, you said out loud, is she going to walk there? <laughs> and then just as I got it out of my mouth, she's walking. helicopter shot of a field. I thought it was the Sound of Music commercial. It was like, it was an ad for French wheat. You make your bread with it. But um, it was like that. And as you were, you was like, hello? The beginning of part two is Joe just walking on this road in the middle of nowhere and, and yeah. Matthew what did you say I said no one would hear her scream <laughs> no absolutely not serial it killer was so, like, yeah, yeah. it was beautiful it was picturesque Again, I would like innocent it. time innocent writing That's what I would like, yeah. but I would want like a sketch pad or like a book or something to read <laughs> To be like, this is she's this, busy hitchhiking. Yeah, no, she's, yeah. she's allegedly she's just down hitchhiking. The yeah, street by herself. Yeah. So while <laughs> she's there, terrifying. Uh, a bike goes past her, and then <laughs> flips her off. Right? No, he no. doesn't. It's, it's he's the a reason. suck of my dick, bitch. <laughs> what was his no, name? really, David. David. And David. his name was David. And then as Joe makes her way further down the road, that guy on the motorcycle who yeah. drove by did not flip her off or scream something. Mm -hmm. Uh, he is fixing his bike. His bike is broken down. Yes. And Joe walks up to him as Joe only can and says, Hey, you know where I come from? A biker would help out another biker and pick her up if he saw her on the side of the road. Correct. How's he going to know you're a biker? Thank you. But I don't want to blow my wad, but okay, I really like the guy. But anyway, moving oh, on. No, moving no, no. on. Moving on. No, he, yeah. this, is a, this is a, you know, oh, he's, sure. ooh, their sparks are flying and they're at odds, but, yeah. but they're eventually going to, they're eventually going to. Come it's together. Eat, love, pray. So far. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And Joe is Julia Roberts. Is she? Yeah. Is no. she? Eat, pray, love. You mean? Yeah, that one. Is that what I said? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so the deal is, um, <sighs> he ends up looking up at her and he says, "I don't have another helmet." And she's like, "I would have taken my chances." I take and it raw. I know. <laughs> Sorry, we gotta get through this. Noted. Shut so up. Joe helps him basically. <laughs> All right, children. Yeah, we're getting. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're back. We're back. Joe helps him fix his bike, but she says, "If I help you fix your bike, you are gonna take me to Le Mans. That now you're my ticket you got it. to the place." You and he's it. like, "Sure, if you can, ya girl." But of course, yeah. she does. Of course, you have to be by parents. Yeah. Okay. 
So then we get the Tootie and Natalie plot. Tootie so. and Natalie have supposedly, with the other, with Blair, stayed at Mrs. Garrett's. Mm-hmm. And um, there is a scene that was also cut from the broadcast version where it's like the morning after they're starting the day. Mm. Joe's already gone. But Mrs. Garrett, thankfully, is saying, you can't run away from school. They're, they must be worried sick. There's going to be shit mm-hmm. to be, come on. Mm-hmm. And the girls are like, oh, it'll be fine. And um, Mrs. Garrett, you'll call and get our passports, won't you? And then finally they say, Mrs. Garrett, that school, being there, it was like being trapped and being lorded over by a despotic, awful person telling us what to do and having no sense of freedom or happiness. She, didn't care. she was like, okay. Yeah, Mrs. Garrett, who could, of course, commiserate because of her situation at the cooking school, was like, fine, go ahead, yeah. violate every rule, but I don't give a fuck. She really wanted to be alone. She's like, I want you guys to leave me the fuck alone. Yeah, Bas- that too. Basically what it was. That too. But yeah. And then, um, so... Uh, Blair has had this thing happening where she is insistent and has been from the beginning that she is going to fall in love. She's going to come back to the States with a French boyfriend. Hopefully not cut up in pieces in her Which luggage. I don't know why she would want to do that because I've been through that and it's yep. not nope. the You best. do not want to wash the yeah. box. Yeah. No. Yeah. I just realized we're on the next morning and these kids have been missing from this field trip. And yeah. The police aren't after him. That nope. would have been a nice subplot. Matthew, it nope. doesn't police matter because him. you yep. have a pale w- yellow dress. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> They're never going to find you. Never going to find you. find you. you. It's pale yellow. It's Talk about hiding in, yellow. It's pale. hiding in plain sight right there. Yeah. <laughs> like She didn't call the police or anything. This headmistress was like, eh, yeah. we lost <laughs> the Americans. Yeah. Did you check clear? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> or whatever the accent yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I agree 150%. <laughs> yeah. So well, what a great subplot that would have been for Natalie and Tootie to be running from the cops. I, yeah. And that have it be much better. a bumbling from French. Their cops and from their sexual predator. But anyway. Oh, wow. Well. Have it be a bumbling French inspector played by Peter Sellers. Hilarious. That would have been comedy gold. <clears throat> no. Anyway, instead of that great idea that we just came up yeah. with, yeah. instead what we get is we get... The two of them walking around a cafe. Mm -hmm. Natalie is fixated on where famous people are buried. So Mm -hmm. Tootie is like, I'm tired of going to tombs and this is crazy. And then Natalie looks over at a guy sitting at a table in a cafe and she says, oh my God, that's Mr. Kylie. That is, what was his first name? George? It was a G name. G-K. G-K. Yeah, G-K. Could they have found two letters that just didn't go together? At yeah, all. Agreed. The agreed. UK and Cincinnati. Yeah. And the man that they notice because. KRP. Yeah. <laughs> Natalie recognizes him because he is the author of a book that she greatly enjoyed and admired. I can't tell you so, how many times I've recognized an author. Yeah. Oh, when it comes to. At, like the yeah. Walden books. Yeah. yeah. Never happened. To, yeah. It's like J- J.K. Rowling could knock on my door and I'd be like, hey, what's up? Can I help you? <laughs> what the yeah. hell are you doing on my yeah. lawn? Yeah. Get off my lawn. Exactly. Yeah. Are you here to rob yeah. me? <laughs> Take my money. <laughs> but um, <laughs> instead, uh, so yeah, we recognize an author and she points to him and yes, it is, there he is. American J.K. character J.K. actor Frank Bonner. And Paul really so, wants to no, sing that theme song so fucking I love bad. It. I love it. I'll Frank stop. Bonner is best known to television audiences uh, from uh, WKRP in Cincinnati, oh. the role of Herb Tarlick. Never heard of it. He was the salesman. He was the sleazy salesman who always had the loud plaid suits. Mm-hmm. And WKRP is a CBS show. So okay. what he's doing, slumming he's it over on he's moonlighting. Hey, NBC. Your money, you know, money. Beyond me. So very quickly, the conversation is, hey, you're that writer and I love you. And your book was awesome. He's like, cool. What are you doing here in Paris? Oh, you know, just hanging out. And they just sit down at this table. They strike up a conversation. And uh, through the how does it come about that he writes for, oh, he gives tours now. Or something. How does it come about that they say, well, good, you're going to give us a tour and you're going to show us Paris. Is it just because he's another American? I don't know. I think it it's just because it it's a make... TV movie and they have two hours yeah. to show Paris. That's pretty much it. Yeah. yeah. It's so it, but anyhow, they become in illogically familiar with him. <laughs> 
in a very, very short period of time, as though they know this dude, and and he should be a lot more put off by two teenagers just deciding he's their best fucking buddy. Because how old are they supposed to be? Tootie is 15, yeah. Natalie is 16. Okay, you are... So, legal in France? Uh, well, my question... But put yourself in that situation, because you're probably... David, probably yeah. the same age as Herb Tarlick was when they made um, her action. I, well, he's probably like 27. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to look up and see how old he was. Uh, we gotta, you you, you keep talking. You keep talking. Um, but just you're sitting in France and this 15-year-old girl and a 16-year-old Never. girl come up and like, I saw you on the streets of Hollywood That's and the, yeah. I love your work and now we're going to hang out with you. I'd be like, I'm getting that. F out of here. That's the yeah. first 50 minutes of like Dateline and NBC. Where were your parents? At o'clock on Friday night. I mean, okay as a goose. Yeah. I know nothing's going to happen with us. I just don't want teenage girls hanging around me. But he yeah. hugged them a lot. He was like touching them. He was like grabbing them. And yeah. Boom. It's like that. Um, he was born in 42, so he's exactly 40. Cool. Oh. In this. Oh. <laughs> Hell. He is exactly 40, and they are 15 he and 16. He's the same age as Mrs. Garrett, and she's 60. <laughs> she's 56 now. Well, the conversation, the big thing is that this novel he wrote, <laughs> Natalie is anxious to find out when the next installment, when he's going to do a follow-up. Mm. And he's like, I don't know, whatever. And somehow they finagle that because he's there in Paris, you're going to give us a, a sewer tour tomorrow? This talk of a sewer tour? He's going to take you into the sewer? Yeah, and no one would hear them scream. That's, That's what this a, should have been called. Serial Killers, number three. <laughs> the whole movie should have been called Nobody Will Hear You Scream. Facts of life, nobody right, will hear you scream. Out. <laughs> it doesn't get any more, okay. any more pleasant or comfortable. Or believable. Uh, no. Yeah. But nothing is at this point. So then, um, Blair is in front of a, a building... And she's sketching. Suddenly, Blair is back to being an artist again, <laughs> of all the many, many things that Blair does in her extracurriculars. Mm -hmm. So she's sketching outside, and a man walks up. And uh, she kind of is walking around and moving around, and then she sits down to continue sketching. And a man walks up and says, excuse me, that is not where you were sitting before. It should have been on my face. No. no he doesn't say that. No. He doesn't say that. And what he saying. says is, I'm paraphrasing. Um, he says, no, you are sitting over here with your legs crossed. And he shows her that he has been sketching her. <gasps> and suddenly. Except she's nude in his. No. I, I went to the bathroom. David, you he know. wants her. He wants her. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, um, they're trying to play this up as, oh, what a romantic way for them to meet. This is going to be the boyfriend that Blair meets. Mm -hmm. Unless uh, she wants to meet. Only one thing. Him. Ew. Not attractive. No, gross. No. Like, Looks like Gerard Depardieu fucked Bud Court from Harold and Maud. Not cute. And at a baby all. came out no. in France. No. Yeah. No. 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 Not, no. No. You don't look at him and think, oh, yeah, yeah. you need to get no. on that girl. He's not good enough for Blair. No. Not my Blair. No, not our Blair. No. Your personal, close personal friend. Very close personal friend, Lisa Welch. Yes, of course. But uh, Blair is still nonetheless taken in by him. She's, and I'm just like, really. Yeah, so they start walking hand in hand, don't they? And no sooner do they... He looked they... a little young Andrew Lloyd Webber-ish to me. Oh, yeah. Now like, there's you know a what I mean? sex... Like that, that comb over, long comb over. Yeah. Whatever you think. Like, you have to be an amazing artist for me to be like, okay, because, yeah, that was... Yeah, not... yeah. Was, was the picture that is good that, that he drew? That if I'm going to go that way, if I'm going to go that way, then yes. Mm -hmm. Is that the yeah. line? That's the line? <laughs> got to be an artist? <laughs> moving on that. kids sure. now so um no sooner does blair kind of you know she's clearly taken in and there's the close-ups of them looking longingly into each other's eyes and then you hear papa papa and this kid runs up with this woman and it's clearly his kid and we don't know if this woman is his wife or his girlfriend or whatever and blair is like what the fuck is happening right now <laughs> And then he just looks at her as he sort of is like, yeah, okay, go on. <laughs> what can I say? I am French. So. I'm a rapist. Uh, no. <laughs> and that's basically what that line says. Um, wow. Me, I am a rapist. Anyway, clearly this is not the man of Blair's dreams. Right. Yeah. 
Um, then we go back to Joe and David, and the bike has broken down again. And this and is where I really want to get into things, because I love David. He is. It was like watching Hepburn and Tracy, He's wasn't it? so beautiful. There... Oh, Matthew just snarfed. I mean, Wait a minute. If you can, in a Facts of Life goes to Paris movie, it was. I really, really like him. Yeah, I agree. He I was nice. Watch him. But um, they still the sparks Matthew. fly in the scrawny arms. Matthew, yes, dear. <laughs> but the deal is, this is the morning after now, isn't it? Where she says, um, "the the bike, your bike breaks down a lot," and she's like, "Well, I fixed it yesterday." Because well, if you really fixed it, it wouldn't have broken down again, and you wouldn't have had to sleep under a tree last night. So she says kind of like, oh, I'm never going to get to Le Mans now. And this yeah. is where I realized she was not saying Le Mans. You thought, what? I thought the whole show she was saying, I've got to go to Le Mans. Like a Le Mans class? Yeah. yeah. Just to heard, that's the first time I heard Le Mans. <laughs> it's, it's what's, like, yeah. No, I, Le Mans. L- M-A-N-S. Ma- oh. It's like, like mayonnaise. Mans. Like the plural of man. Like mans. Le Mans. Le Mans. Le Mans. Okay. <laughs> Le Mans. Yep. Exactly. I thought she was going to Lamaze anyway. Yeah. So she slept under a tree, and he apparently <laughs> was fixing the motorcycle all day. All night. night. Fixing that motorcycle. Grease wow. and lubing it up. Yeah. Wow. Giving it a lube oil and filter. <laughs> Hitting that catalytic converter. <laughs> Hitting it. Um, okay. Yeah. We go back to Natalie and Checking company. Checking that battery. I got nothing. You got dipstick. There's a dipstick <laughs> something in there. Damn it, dipstick. Good, Damn it, we one. missed dipstick. Um, so then we go back to Natalie and Tootie, go back to the cafe, and uh, the, the guy, oh, his name is whatever his last, he says, please don't call me Mr. Whatever. Call me GK. Those are my initials, GK. But isn't it sad that when this even came out, and as I watched it, I hated this uh, sub- I hadn't. I fast forwarded it. I didn't uh-huh. care. I didn't want to see it. I didn't care about these people. No, so, um, this whole was yeah. this. It was uncomfortable. Yeah, it really I, was. I, I just yeah. so they show up back to him, and he is at the cafe, and he's having some wine, and they're like, "You didn't show up for our sewer tour that you promised that you would take us on after we forcibly told you you were going to do it." And he's like, yeah, well, I'm uh, busy. I'm working on the next book. And Natalie's like, oh, well, okay, that's great because you're writing your next book. And then up shows this American boss of his, mm-hmm. this African-American woman whom I did not know till Paul told me. I love her. She's actually a really great actress. What's her first name? But in the 70s, she was a really great actress. She played Penny's mom on Good Times yeah. that left her um, with – the family because she couldn't afford to have her, which Penny was Janet Jackson, but um, Chip yeah. Miss Jackson is Chip. nasty. Yeah, her name is Chip Fields. But she's a good actress. She really is. She was good, and I really enjoyed her in uh, future episodes of Acts of Life as Judy's mom. But she's she's solid. She's yeah. good. She no, has, she's good in this yeah. with the overly expositional dialogue she's yeah. given. What are you doing? Are you here at the cafe yeah. again, drinking like you always do? <sighs> You can't get a job in this town. Why, everybody has got word out that no one will hire you. And here I've taken a chance on hiring you. And you're supposed to be writing this article about Paris for my travel magazine. Well, if it's not on my desk by noon tomorrow, you are through in this town. Her mom is actually quite good. Yeah. So. No, she's like good. Her. She's yeah, very good. I like her. Yeah. Um, did a bus and truck tour of the Wiz with her back in the 70s. She probably did, did to with be honest. You and Chip Fields? Yeah. Did- did yeah. and tra- she what, what role probably now? did, but she's really good. Now, what yeah. role did you play? She played Auntie M. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I, I, was, I was the mean old lion. <laughs> yeah. Because it how... wasn't considered blackface because it was a lion's face. <laughs> Sorry, oh, dear. my God. <laughs> wow. But, um, okay, so anyway. So the girls basically say, what after after your boss Mrs. Exposition just left us? <laughs> what you you drinking too much? You know, you're gonna write that article and you're gonna show us Paris right now because we suddenly have something at stake here that can't be explained and we're bossing you. Oh, and again, performing for the fucking balcony. Oh yeah, can't believe you're sitting here drinking. And he's like, well, a lot of French people have 
alcohol or have wine with their lunch. Do they always have lunch at 10 o'clock in the morning? She gave him the same intensity she gave her dad when she saw him cheating on his wife. Yeah. She was like, she's like, there were tears coming out of her face. Do they always drink at 10.30 in the morning? Yeah. Like, you're not invested. And no, why do you want to spend the day with a drunk guy? With this guy, like, yeah. I'd be like, oh, okay, well, we're going to go. Yeah. Uh, honestly, Frank Please. Bonner is doing the best he can Please. with trying to play something Please. remotely Please. natural Please. with Please. this completely yeah. unnatural premise. Yeah. But the thing is, at one point, the girls do start to leave. And I, is it Tootie that says we should help him? Yeah. And then they go back. Yeah. And then it's all, we're invested suddenly. Yeah. And more than anything, it's, I think, I swear to God, it's, it, this might be a Jewish joke where Natalie just wants a free tour guide around Paris. <gasps> wow. I'm just saying. Wow. They've, they've, they've sunken lower than that before. And the girls even say, we're going to stick to you like glue. <laughs> what? I wasn't there. Are we good? <laughs> yeah. Um, so then we go back to Joe and David. They are walking. And this has to be one of Nancy McKeon's worst acting performances. No, okay, no stop. No stop. She did cry. No, at the end, I think she's good. She's yeah, good. but this at whole this whole good. flirty bullshit... Yeah, I mean, and I'll give it 80% to the writing. This is when she's, like, making fun of him. She's, like, giggling as they walk. He's, like, what the fuck are you laughing at? Yeah. yeah. And she's, like... <laughs> Your bike breaks down a lot. Yeah. He's, like... Well, I haven't yeah. had a heifer on it in a while. <laughs> yeah, but she's... <laughs> But she's happy, and she's like, just Bitch, like, you can walk through the dark forest on your own. Completely. <laughs> in Paris. Yeah, you don't you. need me to help you get no. raped and dumped. Uh, <laughs> anyway. So what happens is, I, I'm not sure what happens in that scene. That may be completely immaterial. It probably is. Yeah. Then we get to Blair, who is out to lunch with a friend. Oh, I've forgotten about Blair's whole story. <laughs> I know, Blair's I, story, don't I forget. She, found, she, she, she is, finds herself. She has this friend that we had seen her, dress. and Blair reiterates, yeah. oh, uh, m we're going to do a finish the sentence. This was part of the Mystery Science Theater 3000. Blair is out to lunch with this friend, and she says, I had this dream last night. And in this dream... Joe was eating my pussy. No! What? <laughs> That's what she said. That's not what she said. That's what you said. Oh. I just wanted to let the people hear that. No, that's a true statement. <laughs> yeah. So they run into that artist guy, George. And yes. uh, she thinks maybe she might give him another chance, even though he's got a wife and a kid. What the fuck is happening? And then they go to lunch. And then when he finds out that the friend that she's staying with is a famous artist, he is like, well, you, you said there was a party tonight. I have to accompany you to the party. And Blair very quickly is like, you just want to meet my friend because she's another artist. You just yeah. want to fu fuck you. You realize that yeah. he's, a, Frenchies. he's a player. He's Them, a player. Those damn Frenchies, yeah. Okay. So, n done. Then we go back to the skewel, and that is where we have the chef. He's being chummy with the guys, and once again, he suggests to Edna that she has made a ridiculous choice for her final exam meal, which is something to do with lobster. Yeah. And she is like, but it would be interesting. Blah, blah. And he says, I think you need to drop out of this school before you humiliate yourself. But then Edna, her resolve reinforced. She says, I will not drop out. And then she turns her back to him and faces nowhere in the room, as a long wall. as it's the camera, faces a wall, yeah. and says, I have not yet begun to cook with her finger pointing in the air. And then she grabs an electric mixer and mm -hmm. sticks it into a bowl heaping with flour. It would Nothing never happened. happen. With dry flour, which goes everywhere for yeah. a hilarious sight gag. I love that as an end, but she should know better. But it's it's ridiculous that it's, it is so contrived. Gag. And that was a lot of work for that sight gag. A lot of work. Like and cleaning up and everything had to be a bitch. Yeah. Hope they can, didn't... This is one take, Edna. Yeah. Yeah. We Good thing one. it's a TV movie where we don't do two takes. Right. Obviously, if you've seen the other performances. So can... And at this point, if you are watching it in uh, the shorter increments, this is the end of part two and therefore the midway point of... 
this uh, magnum opus of cinematic brilliance. Holy pot. Cinematic brilliance. Yeah. And both of them, you're looking at me with eyes like, we're only halfway through this <laughs> yeah. shit. Wow. That is really? Yeah. yeah. So, yes, we are going to stop here. We're going to end this episode. Leave you on a cliffhanger, kids. <laughs> How do they get back to America? I know. You you can have to wonder. Without being raped, murdered, or <laughs> Will Edna graduate from the school? I'm oh, yeah. I'm really oh, yeah. not sure at this point. I don't know if she's going to I don't know if she's going to pull through and do it. Yeah. But anyway, this is a great time to say I am so happy you two are here doing well, you this were with at me. The beginning. And we're at the middle. Now, we're at the were, middle. No, you were happy at the beginning. Now it's like, okay. <laughs> this isn't going to happen I again. am still ecstatically happy. You know, think you're wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to leave you here. And uh, you guys, I'm not saying goodbye to you two. I'm saying goodbye to this episode and sending it back to myself in the studio. So uh, goodbye. <laughs> there you have it. That was Matthew Arter and Paul Padilla. Oh, so much fun. And I do not know how I managed to edit it down to this short an episode, especially considering the technical problems I had. It was, you have listened to nothing short of a miracle. So I'm now going to get cracking on part two because they're going to be back next week. And uh, I have nothing else to say to you. Thank you so much for listening to this week's show. And remember, the facts of life are all about you. Let's Face the Facts was produced, written, hosted, and edited by me, David Almeida. My theme song was beautifully arranged and recorded by Ned Wilkinson. Our website is facethefactspod.com. You have to drop the let's. And that's where you can find extra pictures, video, and audio extras from the digital cutting room floor. Follow the show on social media. We're everywhere under the handle Face the Facts Pod. And don't forget, go to your favorite podcatchers and subscribe, rate, and review. Tune in again next week for another thrilling episode of Let's Face the Facts. <laughs>